Good evening, I'm Kimelia and you're watching Kini News. Is Kajang Prison's most recognised inmate also the prison best treated? More questions about Najib's treatment in prison are being raised following a viral message. Najib Abdul Razak's access to the outside world lends credibility to the allegation that he has been accorded preferential treatment. This is according to PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli. He was referring to an anonymous message making rounds on social media. The message referred to Najib with the code name Marpati. Among others, the message alleged that Najib's cell in the Kajang prison complex has been renovated and there are plans to move him to the Chiras Rehabilitation Hospital to allow more access to visitors and VVIP facilities. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, Rafizi said he was disinclined at first to comment on the matter since it concerned an anonymous message. However, a posting on the former Premier's Facebook page yesterday, taking a swipe at Rafizi announcing Pekar's plans to engage undecided voters, changed his mind. Rafizi said the public is being told that Najib's health is not good, but on the other hand, he seems to be doing fine and can even post messages on Facebook. Rafizi added that even if Najib says the postings were made by his Facebook page administrator, Najib should not have any interaction with the outside world. Rafizi then questioned how did Najib pass the message to his Facebook administrator, let alone know what was said during the PKR machinery launch on Sunday. He added that if Najib does have access to the outside world, then it would be a mockery of the courts which imprisoned him for corruption. Rafizi also said that it would corroborate the Merpati rumours and therefore urged the government not to remain tight-lipped on the matter. Malaysia Kini has reached out to the Home Ministry, Prisons Department and Najib's representatives for comment. Another lawmaker who has spent time in prison, however, not for corruption, but for being involved in an illegal assembly back in 2000, Mahfuz Omar, revealed that he did not get special treatment, despite being Najib senior. Now, he wants authorities to be transparent. Amana Vice President Mahfuz Omar has echoed calls for answers from the government over an anonymous message claiming that Najib Abdurazak has been accorded certain privileges in prison. Mahfuz, who described himself as Najib's senior at Kajang Prison, called on the authorities to treat all prisoners in the same manner. He explained that he himself was imprisoned in Kajang, and while being more senior than Najib in Kajang, he did not get any special treatment. Mahfuz said the public must know the truth if the government is spending taxpayers' money on Najib, who is serving a 12-year prison sentence for corruption. The Amanah leader said if the allegations are true, the government must explain the rationale for forking out more money for Najib. He said especially when there is no guarantee that the nation would recover the losses incurred in relation to the SRC and 1MDB scandals. A pot calling the kettle black, that's how one PKR leader has viewed the recent squabble between Ismail Sabri and Muhyiddin. Ismail Sabri Yaakob and Muhyiddin Yassin are both icons of failure. This is according to PKR Deputy Information Chief Chua Wei Kiat. He alleged that the Prime Minister and the Perikata National Chief have failed in their respective duties of leading the country. Chia said after Muhyiddin became Prime Minister via the Shiratan move, he failed to contain the COVID-19 situation and declared an emergency to stay in power before his administration was toppled. As for Ismail Sabri, Chia said the UMNO leader's administration is crippled as he is unable to control the fall of the ringgit, resolve UMNO's internal issues, as well as the literal combat ship scandal. The Rawang assembly person was responding to the exchanges between Ismail Sabri and his predecessor, Muhyiddin, pertaining to the 15th general election. Yesterday, Muhyiddin said that Ismail Sabri should call for a general election if he continues to fail to manage the economy. The Bersatu president cited the depreciating ringgit, rising inflation and post-pandemic economic woes as reasons. In response, Ismail Sabri said that if his government fails to manage the economy, the fault will also lie on Muhyiddin as he chairs the National Recovery Council and on ministers from Bersatu who also form the cabinet. Elaborating, Chua said they should stop squabbling with each other as the rakyat has witnessed the failure of both. 
PKR has released its new campaign song. However, one UMNO leader does not seem to be a fan of it. This song has caught the attention of UMNO Supreme Council member Muhammad Puat Zarkashi. He sarcastically heaped praise on PKR for the campaign song Adu Malaysia, composed by Malaysian rapper Ultimate. Puat described it as a fitting song where he claimed PKR admits that they are thieves, as even party leader Anwar Ibrahim was seen singing it. In a statement, he further suggested adding more lines to the song, such as Akulah Penipu, Pemfitna, Perogol dan Peliwat. The Amno man said that the song will be truly complete. He added that the party should compose a different song entitled Aku PM Tepi. Rapper Ultimate joined PKR earlier this year. Taking heavy reference from a song used in the 1961 P. Ramli film Ali Baba Bujang Lapo, in his lyrics, the song takes aim at corruption in the country. Anwar was most recently seen singing the campaign song at the party's picnic rakyat event in Port Dixon on September 17th. PAS continues to hang on to hope that it will be able to join forces with BN in GE15. This is why the party has stressed once again who their real enemy is. PAS Secretary General Takiyudin Hassan reminded his party that their real political enemy is Pakatan Harapan and not BN. Takiyudin said PAS believes a coalition that brings together the Muslim community is the most effective formula to foster national unity. He also claimed it was a strategy that most voters would accept with regard to forming a government that cares for the rakyat. Further, he urged the parties that currently form the federal government to continue working together for GE15. Earlier this month, past Deputy President Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man was quoted as saying their party has decided to face GE15 as part of Parikata National. However, several past leaders, including its president, Abdul Hadi Awang, have repeatedly claimed they are still in talks with AMNO. AMNO leaders have repeatedly denied Hadi's claims. AMNO leaders have set out the condition that any cooperation with PAS must be preceded by the Islamist party breaking ties with Bersatu. Said Sadiq and his band of young hopeful leaders may get a clearer picture tomorrow on whether their application to join Harapan is a step closer to become reality. Youth-led party Muda's application to join Pakatan Harapan will be discussed during the coalition's presidential council meeting tomorrow. This was revealed by DAP National Organizing Secretary Stephen Sim. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, he said the meeting would take place at 3 p.m. at the PKR headquarters in Petaling Jaya. Apart from discussing Muda's application to join Harapan, Sim said the framework of the new committee which was tasked to negotiate with Muda is also expected to be finalized tomorrow. PKR has been deemed as the biggest obstacle for Muda to join Harapan. This is after both parties clashed in Larkin during the Johor state election in March. Earlier, PKR Vice President Chang Lee Kang described Muda's application to join Harapan as too late. Meanwhile, Amana youth recently complained that they felt marginalized as Muda might be given grade A seats for GE15. However, both Amana and DAP's top leaders welcomed Muda's application. A DAP leader said it would be best for Ismail Sabri to wait until Zahid Hamidi is convicted before calling for a general election. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob is caught in a bind in deciding when to hold the 15th general election. This is according to Penang Deputy Chief Minister P. Ramasamy. He said this was due to Amno's constant obsession with wanting to hold the polls early. He noted how Isma Sabri is under tremendous pressure because as the Prime Minister, he would want GE15 to be held next year after the monsoon season is over. However, as the Vice President of AMNO, he has no choice but to adhere to the directive of AMNO. It is worth noting that AMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi has been constantly pushing for early elections, which critics claim was a desperate move to save himself from multiple charges of money laundering, criminal breach of trust and graft, which he is currently facing trial for. According to Ramasamy, Ismail Sabri would ideally prefer a scenario where Zahid has been convicted of his charges as only then the Mura MP can act more authoritatively instead of being a second echelon AMNO leader. 
And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.